Hi there, I'm George Jackson and welcome to your very first ever fiddle lesson. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you have never played this instrument before and we're going to be starting from absolute zero. So this is the complete beginner's guide. I've got three very short and succinct lessons for you by the, the end of which you'll have learnt your very first tune and you'll be able to use your fingers on a couple of the strings. You'll be able to know how to hold the violin, how to hold the bow and where to put your fingers for the very basics. So this is lesson one and we're gonna be focusing on this tool here, the bow, how to hold the bow. We're gonna be learning about the names of the strings, uh, what notes the strings are on the violin, and uh, we're gonna to learn to play on the open violin strings here for this first lesson. So first of all, let's dive right in here with the bow. All right, this is really what makes the fiddle or the violin such a unique uh, sounding instrument and instruments uh, all around the world that are similar to the violin um, also use this technology of horsehair and a stick to make the music. And what um, really sets this apart is that we can create long sustaining notes um, rather than on a lot of stringed instruments which are plucked. Um, those notes uh, sort of decay very short. So here's our, here's our horsehair um, and we have this little screw here which tensions the horse here. Um, we want to make sure that it's tight enough to create a little bit um, a little bit of a gap between the stick and the hair but we want the bow to be curving this way not curving the other way. So make sure that you're not over tightening it. We don't want them to be too parallel. We want just that nice little gap there, N not even a finger's width at the very, um, at the center. Enough so that when we put the bow on the strings, we can have a bit of tension without hitting the stick, but uh, not so tight that the, uh, the arch of the bow is gonna be heading the other direction. All right, how do we hold this bow? Well, we have three points of contact. Uh, our thumb goes on the stick, our first finger on the top of the stick, and our fourth finger, our pinky finger, on the end. So all three of those points of contact are on the stick. Sometimes people begin by learning uh, to hold with their thumb underneath this little uh, end of the bow here. This is called the frog. Kind of looks like a little frog just perched on the edge of the stick there, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> it's a bit of fun. So if you like, if it's more comfortable, start with your thumb underneath the frog. Um, or if you want to go straight to just holding it on the stick, um, my thumb comes down just off the edge of where the frog joins the stick. First finger on top there and pinky finger. Now our middle two fingers here, our middle finger and our ring finger, they're going to just sort of curve over the stick. They're going to act as weights. So we want to sort of end up having the weight of our arm transferred into the bow so that when we place the bow on the strings, we have some weight there coming from our arm and that's sort of coming down through our whole hand and our fingers. These two fingers here, of course, they're not doing much, um, but just sort of transferring that weight. The other fingers are where all of the movement comes in. Um, so we want to be able to sort of move between those three points of contact nice and fluidly. So we're going to Practice a couple of little exercises. So get your bow hold. I'm holding my bow out parallel here uh, to the ground, horizontal. We have, now I want you to make sure that your thumb is not gonna be a banana thumb, what we call a banana thumb, bent out this way. We want it to be nice and relaxed. Usually uh, my go-to advice is, what is the most relaxed hand position we can have? It's when our hand is relaxed at the side of our body. 
So hang your arm down and bring it up and, and that's our most relaxed hand position, something sort of like that. Now our thumb is nice and straight or just ever so slightly bent this way, not bent that way, this way. So make sure that when we're holding the violin, our fingers, or holding the bow and holding the violin, our fingers are in that nice curved position, exactly kind of as it is just at the side of your body. So thumb nice and just sort of bent here, um, curved inwards. We've got a little bit of curve on our fingers as well, but our first finger is coming down on the stick there. We can kind of like have our palm facing the wall away from us when we start that. And then pinky finger down. So we have a little bit of an angle here, as you can see. Middle fingers down. Okay, that's our bow hold. So hold that out for me. Now make sure your pinky finger is bent too. This is a trick, it's, a, it's quite difficult. So don't worry if you can't get it at first. People find it difficult to sort of have their pinky finger bent in that fashion. Often it's kind of sticking out, you know, tense like this. But if you can bend that pinky finger, we want everything to be in the most relaxed position. If you need to remind yourself, just put your hand back down at the side there and bring it back up. Place it on the bow there while you're holding it with your other hand and then transfer. Okay, so if we're holding it out parallel here, we should feel all of the weight of the end of the bow in our pinky finger, which is probably why it's difficult to keep that pinky finger nice and rounded, isn't it? Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna practice this little window wiper technique. The window wiper is when we transfer all of the weight of the bow into the first finger by just kind of like doing this window wiper action. So, at the moment, we've got all the weight in the pinky finger there. As we slowly rotate that bow around so that it's pointing the other direction, all of that weight is going to be in our first finger. So at this point, we can probably pull off the pinky finger and nothing really happens, does it? But we couldn't pull off our first finger because then our bow is going to drop. But as we pull it around, as we rotate it around again for our window wiper, now we can probably tap our first finger. All of the weight is in our pinky finger. So this is the window wiper. And that's just simulating the transfer of the weight of the bow from your pinky finger to your first finger. Now when we pull our bow across the strings, we're going to have something very similar to that feeling. When we start at the very heel of the bow, what we call the heel, or near the frog, that, all of that weight is in the pinky finger. As we pull the bow down across the strings and we get close to the tip of the bow, all of that weight has transferred into our first finger and our pinky finger is not going to be doing much. So you get that feeling, the same feeling of taking a down bow at, when you do this rotating. All right. Okay, so there's a lot in the hold of the bow and the technique of the bow. It's a hard thing to get used to. And it is what sort of sets the violin or the fiddle apart as being a difficult instrument uh, for beginners because it's hard to get used to this, uh, this bow. But what we're trying to do here is set you up with good bow technique right from the beginning so it's gonna be easier for you. Um, okay, so that basically covers our bow, bow hold in a very sort of basic fashion. Try and get that, you know, that look, that curved look that I have on my bow here, if you can. Um, so let's just go over that one more time. Palm to the wall away from you thumb on the stick or the heel, the frog, first finger down, pinky finger down, middle fingers down, nice and curved, everything should be curved, no, no sort of bent or stressed out fingers. Okay, and then we're going to rotate that bow arm around and then back. And that's going to simulate our down stroke. 
One more bow exercise before we get into uh, using our violin and using our strings. We're going to do the spider crawl. This is just a little thing to sort of warm up our fingers, get used to moving our fingers around a little bit because we don't want to have uh, our fingers sort of just stiff and in one position. Um, we want our fingers to be malleable. When we're playing on the strings, we want our fingers to be able to sort of move with the different angles um, that we're gonna that we're gonna need when we are playing tunes and melodies on our violin. So to get used to sort of moving our fingers around a little bit, I want you to try and just one finger at a time, make a little spider crawl up the bow. Try and keep that position. It's difficult. I'm going thumb, kind of first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, thumb. And when we get to about there, maybe about a quarter way up, I want you to try and sort of move back up like this. And sort of try to move each finger individually at times. And just kind of feel where the bow goes and, you know, how each finger is going to be integral to the movement of the bow. And that's just going to help us uh, be malleable with our bow hold. Okay, let's move on to the violin. Here we have our violin. It's got four strings. I use the words violin and fiddle interchangeably. They're basically the same instrument. Um, basically, you know, what you play on the instrument sort of deems whether it's fiddle music or violin music. There are sometimes some setup differences. Sometimes fiddle players like to play on five string fiddle. Sometimes fiddle players like to have flattened bridges or, um, you know, a, a few other sort of technical setup things that are, that, that are different. You know, when you're a violin player, you want maybe to have a very high action and to have gut strings. And, um, and when you're a fiddle player, maybe that doesn't matter so much to you. So, uh, it's kind of interchangeable, but there are maybe some setup differences. But essentially, it's the same thing. So we have four strings, from lowest to highest. Now, when I say low, I'm talking about pitch. I'm not talking about the physicality of the instrument. From lowest to highest in pitch. We have G. That's our lowest string. The next one is D, the next one is A, and the highest string is E. I hope you're uh, able to discern my uh, alphabet names there with, with, uh, with my accent. Sometimes my A's and E's uh, come across differently to folks from different places in the world, but uh, hopefully we'll get that. Maybe I'll stick a little graphic up along with the note names. G. D, A, E. Okay. Um, sometimes you can kind of like create a little rhyme um, or assign some, some words to those letters in order to help you remember. So, um, good dogs are everywhere. Something like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm a dog person at the moment, so... Um, wasn't always, but uh, I've been converted. So good dogs are everywhere. That's, that, that seems like a good, uh, good way to remember our open strings from lowest to highest. Um, okay, so these are tuned in intervals of fifths. The musical alphabet, I'm not gonna go too far into this, but the musical alphabet goes from A to G and then starts again. There are some notes in between all of our um, letter names but we're not gonna worry about that too much right now. G, we go back to A, B, C, D. That's five notes between G and D. D, D, E, F, G, back to A, right? D to A, that's five notes. A to E, A, B, C, D, E, five notes. So we say that the strings are tuned in fifths, okay. What I want you to do is put your violin up under your chin. We should have a shoulder rest here and a chin rest. Uh, but if you don't, a lot of people 
uh, do play the violin without a shoulder rest. You just put it um, on, their, on their collarbone. I recently broke my collarbone, so mine sticks up a little bit. It might even help in that situation. But um, generally, it's more comfortable to play with a shoulder rest. Um, I'll just quickly sort of point out that the shoulder rest kind of has a little curve in it, uh, generally like a lower curve and then a higher curve. The lower curve is where you want your shoulder. That's going to go on the same side as your chin rest. Yeah, I have a particularly high chin rest because I have a long neck and I find that more comfortable. So, all right, I want you to put that up on your shoulder and under your chin. Okay, so you should be able to hold the violin on your shoulder without touching it if possible. But what I want you to do is, just to make sure that you don't drop it, we're gonna hold our violin on the shoulder. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just hold the violin on the shoulder. We're gonna put it on the right hand shoulder. So that should be uh, the one, the shoulder closest to where your bow hand is. Um, so not this side away from your bow hand, but this side closest to your bow hand. That's going to get us used to sort of having this triangle position, which we will eventually sort of have when we hold our violin where we're going to uh, put our fingers. But for now, thumb underneath, fingers on top. We've got the back of the instrument, the belly of the instrument, and I just want you to hold it like that. Get used to your chin down on the on the chin rest and making sure that your shoulder is relaxed. We don't want to tense that shoulder. So none of that if you can. Again, as I said with the bow hold stuff, it's all about being relaxed. And if we can have our shoulder relaxed and make sure that we're not sort of bending our neck in weird ways, I want you to just look straight ahead and just ever so slightly bring that chin down on the chin rest. Okay. That's our, that's our quick violin hold. Okay, grab your bow. What, practice that beautiful bow hold that we, uh, that we started on. And we're gonna learn to play our open strings. This is the last thing that we're going to do here today in our first lesson for the Complete Beginner's Guide. Okay, we're gonna start with a, what we call a down bow. It's a down bow because the motion is generally downwards towards the ground. Um, and so when we, when we go this direction, and we're pulling um, the hand down towards the ground, and that's gonna be called a down bow. When we push the bow up the other direction, that's gonna be called an up bow, okay? Let's start off on the D string. Now, the D string, good dogs are everywhere, is the second lowest string. Okay. Now, there's a lot of angles involved with playing the violin. We have this round bridge and we have this long straight bow. So, if we put down our bow on the strings, you should be able to see that if you lift your elbow, you're going to move on to the G string. If you lower your elbow, you're going to move on to the D string, lower it a little further. Your arm should work as a unit, all sort of moving together not like a wrist movement or just an elbow movement or a shoulder movement. All of that is gonna be just sort of moving in nice harmony together. G string, D string, A string, E string, right down. So at that point, our elbow is gonna be sort of up against our chest even a little bit like that. Let's go back to the D string. What I want you to do is Get close enough to the heel. We don't need to be right up at the heel yet. We can just be a little bit down towards the frog, the heel of the bow, and I want you to just draw that bow stroke down. Here we go. And stop when we get to the tip. Leave the bow on the strings if you can, so rather than taking it off. We're gonna start with the bow on the strings we're gonna finish with the bow on the strings. Okay, hey, 
That's our first bow stroke. Let's try that again. Down. Okay, this time we're going to take it up. So we're keeping the bow on the strings there. You should feel that tension in the first finger because we're at the tip of the bow. And remember that feeling that we're going to get transferring it across to the pinky finger. Up bow, here we go. Down bow. Up bow. Okay. Another thing to think about. There's so many things to think about with the violin. Oh my gosh, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job out there. First thing, to th another thing to think about here is keeping our bow parallel um, to the bridge. So we want it to stay parallel to the bridge the whole time we take it down, if possible. Basically like this. All right. So we're not sort of coming up in angles like this or down in angles like this. We want it to, tr to be as, as straight as possible. You can look in a mirror if you like, and that often helps you kind of gauge whether or not you're doing things uh, in a parallel manner. Also, we want to sort of aim for the flat of the hair, not on one side or the other of the hair. Um, the more hair, that is on the string, the sort of bigger the tone that you're going to pull out of the instrument. Okay, we're thinking about those few things there. Let's try a couple more ups and downs, or downs and ups. Okay, let's move on to the A string. So I want you to drop your elbow a little bit so that the angle of the bow moves until we get to the A string. Here we go, A string. Let's move all the way across to the G string now. So we're lifting our elbow, keeping our shoulders nice and relaxed, a little reminder to keep our shoulders relaxed, shouldn't be tense. Feeling tension. Make sure your thumb is bent this direction, not that direction. Here we go. We're going to start with an up bow on the G string. And then a down bow. And our last string, we're going to move all the way across to the E string. I'm going to start with an up bow here. And then down. Okay. Well, Hopefully you've taken your very first, uh, played your very first notes on the violin now, played our open strings. We know the names of the open strings. We know how to hold our bow. We know how to hold our violin. And we know a little bit about, um, about music theory with uh, the fact that our notes, our, our strings are tuned in the interval of a fifth. We've got G, D, A, and E. All right, you're 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 off. This is this is going to be great. I want you to let me know how this lesson went for you, and uh, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like this video. At the next two lessons, we're going to continue on this uh, complete beginner's guide, and we're going to get you playing your very first tune. Um, we're going to learn how to play notes uh, on the strings um, in the next lesson we're going to sort of learn about our left hand where to put our fingers and we're going to play our very first scale um, and then in our third lesson we're going to learn our very first tune and you'll be off on your journey so i hope you'll join us please check out my patreon page which is patreon.com forward slash george jackson thank you so much for tuning in and good luck.